A summary of curve sketching. Well, hopefully by the time you're watching this, you already know about the first derivative test for finding increasing and decreasing intervals of functions and locating relative extrema, as well as the second derivative test, which helps us determine the concavity of a function, as well as the points of inflection. So what are some tools we have to help us graph functions? Well, first thing I try to do is determine the domain and range which helps me locate asymptotes if there are any. You can locate x and y intercepts by plugging in 0 for x, solving for y, and plugging in 0 for y, solving for x. You can look for symmetry. Uh, you can use the first derivative to locate extrema, and like I said, you can use the second derivative to figure out concavity and points of inflection. So let's just jump right in and do some examples so we can see how these tools will help us graph some of these uh, functions. All right, so I've got x squared plus 1 divided by x squared plus 9. Let's rewrite that as x squared plus 1 over x minus 3 times x plus 3, because that helps me figure out the domain. Right away, I can see that x cannot equal plus or minus 3. So, I'm going to put vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and at positive 3. Are there any horizontal asymptotes? Well, let's take the limit as x approaches infinity of our function. Now you'll notice that the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. So as x approaches infinity, this limit goes to the lead coefficients of the numerator and denominator, which is 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. OK, how about x and y asymptotes, or x and y intercepts? Let's plug in 0 for x and we get y equals 1 over negative 9. So when x is equal to 0, y is negative 1 ninth. I'm going to squeeze it in right there. Uh, are there any x-intercepts? Set the thing equal to 0, solve for x, and remember that for the entire fraction to be equal to 0, I just have to make the numerator 0 and I get x squared is equal to negative 1, which has no real solution, so there are no x-intercepts. OK, uh, what can we do next? First derivative test, how about that? y prime is equal to the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. I said numerator and I wrote the denominator, didn't I? x squared plus 1 times 2x. OK. Oh, and that's all over. x squared minus 9 squared. OK, so on top we get 2x cubed minus 18x, then have a minus 2x cubed, that works out nicely, minus 2x all over x squared minus 9 squared, which is equal to negative 20x divided by x squared minus 9 squared. OK, so that means that we have a critical point wherever this whole thing equals 0, which happens to be at x equals 0. So if I do a sign chart for y prime, I've got a critical point at x equals 0. And if I pick a number to the left and plug it into my denominator, into my whole function, rather, say negative 1, I'm going to get a positive 
over anything squared is positive, so I'm going to get a positive. So the graph is always increasing to the left of 0. If I pick a number greater than 0, plug it in, I'm going to get a negative numerator over a positive denominator, which is negative. So as I read from left to right, this thing is always increasing to the left of 0 and always decreasing to the right of 0. Well, what about the graph of the function itself, just the y values? Let's do a real quick sign chart. We know that we have asymptotes at negative 3 and 3. And if I pick an x value to the left of negative 3, say negative 4, that's going to be a positive over a negative times another negative, which is when I multiply them and divide them all up, I'm going to get a positive. Uh, how about 0? Well, we know that when we plug in 0 for x, we get out negative 1 ninth, so it's negative. And then if I pick a number greater than 3, positive, positive, positive. So that means that the graph is above the x-axis to the left of negative 3, below the x-axis between negative 3 and 3, and above the x-axis again to the right of 3. So here's my take on what this function is doing. It's above the x-axis and increasing. It's below the x-axis and increasing up to 0. And then it stays below the x-axis and it's decreasing. And finally, it's above the x-axis and decreasing. OK? So you don't have to use every single tool to graph these things. Just use the ones that are going to be enough to give you an idea of what the graph is going to look like. OK, let's take a look at this. Well, first of all, since it's a polynomial, my domain is all real numbers. OK, and let's see. Uh, x-intercept, y-intercept, if I put in 0 for x, I get out 0 for y. So that is my x and y-intercept, 0, 0. So this goes through the origin. Let's take the derivative. And let's set that equal to 0 and divide everything by 4. Oh boy, we've got a cubic we need to solve. But if you think about it, it's not that tough. I need these two things to equal negative 4, which will happen if x equals negative 1. Because negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 squared is going to be negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4, plus 4, which is 0. So we can kind of solve that by guessing and checking. So that means we have a critical point at x equals negative 1. So if I pick a number to the left of negative 1, like 0, and put it into my derivative, I'm going to get positive 16. Wait a minute. 0 is to the right of negative 1, isn't it? So that's going to be positive there. Now let's pick a number to the left of negative 1, like negative 2. OK, so that's going to be negative 32 minus negative uh, uh, 48. Well, it's obviously going to be negative, isn't it? So this function is decreasing to the left of negative 1. It's 0 at negative 1 in terms of slope. And it's increasing to the right of negative 1. Let's look at the second derivative. Check out concavity and points of inflection. So I'm going to have 12x squared minus 24x. Set that equal to 0. And divide by 12, I'm going to get x squared minus 2x, which means that for f double prime on my sign chart, I've got looks like two points of inflection, one at 0 and one at 2. OK, so if I pick, uh, say, negative 1, that'll be a negative times a negative, which is positive. So we're concave up to the left of 
0. Pick a number between 0 and 2, like 1. Positive, negative is negative, so I'm concave down there. And to the right of 2, a positive times a positive is positive, so I'm concave up. OK? So let's get some actual points. I have a critical point at negative 1. So f of negative 1 is going to be 1 plus 4 minus 16, which is negative 11. And I've got a minimum then at negative 1, negative 11. And how about our points of inflection? f of 0 is 0, and f of 2 is going to be 16 minus 32 plus 32, which is 16. OK, so we might have enough here to figure out what's going on. I've got a point at negative 1, negative 11. And we're decreasing here like so. Point of inflection is 0, 0. And then at 2, 16, I've got another point of inflection. So basically, I'm saying it's concave up here, concave down here, and then concave up again here. And now I've brought in my calculator. And you can see that I've got the function entered in here. We're just going to check our work. And under the window, I've gone from negative 3 to 3 and for x and negative 15 to 25 for y. And if I graph it, there you go. So we did a pretty good job. Okay, so that's a quick summary of curve sketching.